Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another haul and speculation video. And as usual, I've got a bunch of books I'm looking forward to showing you. Starting off with this one, Fantastic Four number 33, which contains the first appearance of Atuma. As I've mentioned in previous videos, right now I'm a big fan on picking up Namor keys. I think he's set to arrive in the MCU sooner rather than later. Like many people, I think it's likely that he shows up in Wakanda forever. But if not there, I think somewhere soon he's going to come. And of course, if he comes, then a lot of his supporting cast is soon to follow. And of course, Atuma is arguably his biggest nemesis, biggest rival. And so I think if Namor is there, then Atuma is not far behind. And so I think this is a good book to consider picking up now uh, rather than later when I think the price will spike up quite a bit. Uh, and this is a really interesting copy. As you can see, it's a CGC 6.5. And I don't know if you can tell on your side, but this is actually a green label. And this is the first green label book I've ever bought. And as you might know, a green label is a qualified label. And so what that means is that this book has a major flaw. But CGC took a look at it and said, man, that book just looks too good. We don't want to give it a super low grade. And so we're going to give it the grade that it looks. It looks like a 6.5, a very beautiful copy. But it does have this major flaw in it uh, that we need to let a buyer know about. And so what's wrong with this book? Uh, well, this book is actually missing page 12. Uh, and it's a page that does not affect the story. And so it's considered an incomplete book because of that. And something that is really interesting, if you look at a lot of these Silver Age books, and especially the qualified ones, of course, you'll find that a lot of them have that same defect, that page 12 in particular is missing. And so what is up with that? Well, back in these days, Marvel would use page 12 often as an ad page. And so page 12 would be like, you hear Fantastic Four, and it would say something like, also this month, get Amazing Spider-Man number whatever. It would have a picture of the Spider-Man cover and Avengers, whatever, and have a picture of that. Uh, and so I, I think what happened, uh, kids would you know, read this Fantastic Four and they'd be like, oh, well, I want this Avengers and Spider-Man too. And so I'm going to tear it out so I can go to the store and realize which ones I, I need to pick up. And so there's lots of these books uh, that have that page missing. And this one does. And, you know, obviously in some ways that's unfortunate. But on the, on the flip side, of course, it made a, it a much more affordable book for me and one that I think is uh, um, still set to rise in value. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this green label. I'm curious to hear what you have to say in, in the comments. Are these good things to consider buying now? Uh, because as blue labels get more and more out of people's price range, will people go to the next best thing, like a green label or even a purple restored label? Uh, because, again, if you look at this book, it is absolutely beautiful. Of course, you're limited on what you can see there. But when I got this book, I was actually surprised it was only a 6.5. I thought, man, this book is gorgeous. Until I looked at the back side, and you can tell there's a, a good amount of spine rolling. So I, I'm pretty sure that's why it's this low. Uh, but the front cover looks just fantastic. And I'm actually, you know, I, I think it, it, if I, got it, I could crack this and press it, send it in. And it maybe bump up uh, to 7.5 or maybe even an 8. Um, but I, I'm probably not going to do that, especially since it's a green label. Um, it's still, this is just for my, my personal collection. Uh, and so I'm just happy to have it. And again, it looks fantastic and a super, super cool one. Uh, and speaking of name more keys, all these books I got from the same seller today. Uh, I also picked up Strange Tales number 125 in a CGC blue label, uh, 4.5. And this, of course, contains this awesome battle cover with Namor and Thing and the Torch. And this actually wasn't a book that I was looking for. Like, I was looking for that Fantastic Four 33. Uh, but the seller just had this at, a, at a, what I felt was like a great price. And, uh, and it's such an awesome, beautiful cover. And, of course, these old Strange Tales will only go up in value over time. And so it's a pretty safe investment. Again, as safe as a comic book can be as an investment, uh, these old Silver Age books are, will, will steadily climb and potentially spike. Again, if Namor hits it big, people might be looking for some of these awesome covers uh, that he's on. 
And uh, I know everybody always says this, but you know, it looks better than the grade. Uh, and you know, some flaws in the back, and that's always where I want to see uh, my flaws. But I'm really happy to have this one. And then picked up some ungraded books. Uh, first of all, Submariner number 32, which contains the first appearance of Lyra. And once again, uh, when Namor pops up, then of course the supporting cast will pop up. And I don't think she's as likely to appear as a Tuma. Um, so I, I wouldn't say you got to run out and get this book. Um, but if you're looking for Namor keys, this is an affordable one. It's pretty cool. And if she does pop up, then again, this book blows up in value. If not, again, it's just an old book that will steadily grow in value over time, I think. And then one more <laughs> Submariner book, which is kind of funny. It's this one, Submariner 13. But I bought this not because of Namor spec, even though it's uh, his, his title. I actually got this because it contains the first appearance of Gargantos. And so this is actually Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness spec. And the reason that's the case uh, this summer, there were rumors that an actress had been cast uh, to have the voice of Gargantos, who's like this weird kind of squid-like creature. And then a couple of weeks ago, I saw a toy leak, and there's a Lego set that's called something like Gargantos Showdown. And so there's Gargantos and versus America Chavez and Doctor Strange and Wong and a Lego set. And something to really keep your eye out on are these toy leaks because often they'll let you know what characters are going to show up before they're actually uh, confirmed uh, by Marvel. Same way I, there's a Death Dealer leak, uh, I guess back in probably like February or March. And so I bought that character even though he hadn't been, or his first appearance, even though it hadn't been announced that he was officially going to be in the Shang-Chi movie. And then he ended up being there. And so I got that book for $3, and at one point it was selling for about $100 on eBay. And so if I hadn't seen that toy leak, then I wouldn't have picked up that book, and I wouldn't have got it at the price I did. And so the same way, I actually bought a few copies of this, uh, and this is the, the best looking copy. Um, and so it's the one I'll, I'll keep, and I'll probably try to flip the others to help cover these. Um, but this uh, yeah, contains, again, that first appearance of Gargantos, and then just... Uh, this past week, like a couple of days ago, uh, the new Doctor Strange trailer showed up, and who was in there? Well, Gargantos. At least Gargantos, as he's called in the Lego set. So it's kind of interesting because it actually looks more like Shuma Gorath, uh, and, and they're kind of these similar kind of looking characters, uh, but uh, on the Lego set it says Gargantos, and so people have been running to, to buy this book this week. And so I'm glad I got it when I did, as well as those other uh, two. So I'm really glad to have that one. Uh, some other books I got, and these aren't as much speculation books, but just cool books for my collection. Uh, Thor number 274. And so this contains the first appearance of Frigga, who of course is Thor's mother, who's already been in the Thor movies. And I guess you don't need to get a spoiler alert, uh, you know, uh, this long after the movies have come out, but you know she dies in the movie, so I don't. Of course, they can always bring her back with the multiverse, but I don't. Uh, you know, see this book like all of a sudden spiking in value at any point, but like any just old old. Not that this is like super old, um, but you know, probably Bronze Age, maybe Copper Age. Uh, Thor, it'll just climb in value over time, and I always love to have first appearances of characters who have been in movies, and so glad to have this. And in addition to her, some fun little keys uh, that, that are associated with this book. It's also the first appearance of Hugin and Moonin. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but those are Odin's ravens, uh, as well as Sleipnir, Odin's horse. Uh, so if you're a fan of collecting first appearances of uh, comic animals, well, this is another one uh, that you might think about getting. It also contains the death of Balder. Balder shows up you know, at some point, and they throw that storyline, then maybe this book does go up. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not betting on any of those things to make this book big, but it's a cool uh, book to have in my collection. And also this one, uh, Green Lantern number 21. This is a really cool one. And this is definitely a low-grade copy, but this contains the first appearance of Dr. Polaris, uh, who is basically the inspiration for Magneto, and so he's a cool villain in the DC universe. 
And of course, DC and Marvel rip off each other's characters, you know, like with Namor, DC ripped off and made Aquaman. And then uh, it's funny, sometimes the ripoffs become more popular than the original character. And so I would, I think Aquaman's more popular than Namor. And uh, so he's the ripoff that's more popular. In the same way, Marvel ripped off Dr. Polaris, and that's who Magneto is. They basically have the same magnetic powers, and they're just a ripoff. Um, but uh, um, I'm glad to have this one, just a, a cool character again. And uh, then the seller was really neat. Uh, he threw in uh, just a few books for free. Uh, he saw what I liked, of course, and so Submariner number 31. A uh, really cool battle cover again with Namor and Stingray. I think Stingray uh, it would be a great character to uh, consider looking for his first appearance. I think it's in Submariner number 19. I might be wrong on that uh, in terms of uh, Stingray's first appearance. The, the person who becomes Stingray, his first appearance is in Tales to Astonish somewhere in the 90s, 94, 95. I, I have that book, uh, but I don't have the first appearance of actual Stingray, and it's a book on my to-get list. Uh, and then Green Lantern number 101 contains this awesome Green Lantern Green Arrow cover. And then Thor 421. Uh, that, yeah, I don't have this book, and I eventually would like to add the full run of the early Thors, and so uh, I am glad to have that one to fill my run. All right, uh, that brings me to my sleeper of the week, which is this one, Young Blood number two, which contains the first appearance of Prophet. And recently it was uh, said, and yeah, I don't know how far along in development it is, but that Jake Gyllenhaal is going to portray this character in a movie. And so I think this book will see a bump in price once that movie, once that yeah trailer is released and all that kind of stuff. And it also contains the first appearance of Shadowhawk, uh, another uh, po somewhat popular image character. And uh, so it's a double key, but I got it mostly because it contains the, the first appearance of Prophet. Uh, what keeps it from having a ton of value is that there's like a, a billion of these that were, uh, were made uh, back in the 90s. Uh, but I still think yeah, I got the, you can probably get this book pretty easy for a couple of bucks. Yeah, I think in a year, two years, whatever, whenever the movie's announced, you just put this away, and then it, every time you see one, and then maybe they're going for 20, 25. Uh, once that movie uh, starts coming out. So glad to have this one. And that brings me to my question of the week. So by the time you're watching this, uh, it should be Christmas. And, or this will at least be released on Christmas if you're watching it later in the week. I'm taping this a little early and gonna release it on Christmas. So I obviously don't have to record a video on Christmas. Uh, but I'm curious, did you ask for any comic related gift for Christmas? Uh, or at least money that you knew you were going to put towards a, a certain comic if you didn't trust someone uh, to, uh, to pick out the right one. So were comics involved in your Christmas? And if so, uh, let me know uh, which comic you got for Christmas or which one you're planning to buy with your Christmas money. Uh, for me, I asked uh, for money uh, for, <laughs> for, for comics uh, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, the people I know will know which ones I want to want to get, and I'll look for a deal. But there are certain comics I'm on the the lookout for. I, I will say, I guess one thing my my parents have done the last couple of years, and so this is a specific purpose purchase. Um, they bought me an annual subscription to Marvel Unlimited. So I think they'll do that again this year. I asked them to do that, and so looking forward to reading many more Marvel comics in the year to come. But but what did you ask for? Uh, if you didn't ask for comics, just what did you get for Christmas that you liked? Uh, so anyway, um, uh, that's going to bring us to an end of this video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate if you consider doing so. We're getting super close to 150 subscribers, and so uh, please help us reach that goal. Um, comment on the video with the question of the week, or what you think about green labels, or anything else about comics. Any questions, I'd love to uh, interact with you with. And, of course, do things like like the video, all those things that help us with the YouTube algorithm. All right. Enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed it, too. And until the next time.